POV, you're in your 30s, it's a Saturday night, you're sitting on the floor in a tracksuit pajama set, you've got a whole box of Cocoa Puffs, <laughs> it's my milk, you have a tea, you are playing Spotify poolside lounge in the background, you have company, you always have company, whether you can see them in the video or not, and you're doing one of your most favorite activities ever, which is filming a YouTube video, um, or in other words, like doing something creative. <laughs> so yeah, that is me right now. I am peaking in this experience that I'm living in this moment. I was just thinking before, like what, is there anything else I would rather be doing right now? And I could not think of anything else that I could be, you know, that I could practically do tonight apart from needing to travel to maybe go and see family, like right now, there is nothing else I would rather be doing. So yeah, welcome to another video of Beanbag Diaries. I am obviously not on my beanbag today. I'm just chilling uh, on the couch, on the floor, because these were just the vibes tonight. And I couldn't, I couldn't wait to film this video. It, it could be a long one, I honestly don't know. I spent the whole of today filming another video, yet I could not wait to film this one. I've just got so many things I wanna talk about, so many ideas to share, so many things that I've got thoughts on. Whether one person watches this or 10 people watch it, like um, I'm doing this for me. My beanbag diaries are hopefully for some of you to watch and get to know me a little bit, but that I feel like they're equally for me, like they're so therapeutic. I really think I need to start a podcast. But anyway, that's what this is. I need to pour some Cocoa Puffs. Um, for those of you who are new, which I don't imagine anyone who doesn't watch my videos would be watching this, but hello, I'm Anika. Uh, I live in Melbourne, Australia. That's all I'm gonna say for the intro because yeah, I think these videos are probably for people who watch my other videos. So yeah, if you're watching this and you don't watch my other videos, I don't know what you're doing right now. <laughs> Thank you, but maybe there's something else you wanna be doing. But um, I'm gonna run through a list of all the things I wanna chat about today because, sorry if that's noisy, there are so many. And I was putting some pressure on myself to keep this video to a certain length. And then I was like, no, like who cares? Screw that, who cares? Uh, let me just talk about whatever I wanna talk about and just put it out there because I love watching videos like this um, so much. Two of, or one of my favorites is Natalie Babu. She does a lot of solo vlog, um, podcasts that she uploads to YouTube. I love those. I actually much prefer solo podcasts um, to interviews. Like I think we've, there's so many interviews out there, like a solo podcast is where it's at for me. And I recently discovered Vanessa Lau. She used to be pretty big on YouTube several years ago. I only just discovered her as she's come back to YouTube after taking a break. And she did, she's done a few videos recently where she's quite literally, weirdly actually, she was wearing a pink tracksuit set as well, sitting on the floor in her home office, just like being really honest. And look, I don't have anything juicy to talk about today, but, I do have some really interesting things to share. And yeah, um, I had a really late lunch. So this is my dinner. And like, so I'm keeping it honest, you know, like Cocoa Puffs is my dinner and that's okay. I will cut out the crunching because that's, that's gonna get annoying. But let me share with you guys what I wanna talk about today. The last Beanbag Diaries I did was back in February. So March, April, May, four months. So I did have to count that four months ago. Um, back in February, I had just gotten back from a really cool trip to Japan. It was still summer for us. Uh, I had just, I was, in, I was in the early days of my new role in a startup. And what else? I think that was it. I think I was just like getting back into a routine after a turbulent work year, which was 2023. Uh, a lot of lows that I've shared in previous beanbag diaries. And I was just getting back to like being myself. And yeah, I'm 
a part of me wants to say like, oh, okay, not, not a lot has happened since February, but in a way, a lot has happened because like inside I feel like me again. And yeah, I want, I want to talk a little bit about, about that journey and let me, I want to talk about that. But some of the other stuff I want to talk about today, let me quickly run through. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did today, how I spent the day, because it was just the most fulfilling day. I think I've had just the best day. I want to talk about a bit of a mid-year goal check-in. I'm not gonna do like a goal check-in, but just talk about how I think about that and we're approaching the actual middle of the year. So that's on my mind. I'm gonna talk about a new exciting non-work goal that I have that has been a lifelong bucket list item for me. I wanna talk about being a generalist and someone who's multi-passionate and how I've been thinking and, and trying different ways to like manage my time, things around that. So if you're someone who's also struggling with like wanting to do so many things, like let me just share my thoughts on it. Uh, I wanna talk about starting a podcast. This could probably be a podcast. I've got some mental blocks with starting a podcast. That's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about YouTube and editing, getting an editor, trying to outsource some things, stuff like that. Solopreneurship, that is a big topic I wanna to talk about and you guys might be surprised given my career to date and things like that. I'm excited about the idea of solopreneurship, so we'll talk about it. Career coach updates, how, how am I post all of the career coaching stuff that I did and yeah, just stuff like that. I've also got some books that I wanna share with you. I've got a big ton of books. I'm trying to transition myself from being an audiobook listener to being a physical book person and I'll, I'll share why. So yeah, let's start with just a few things that have happened since the last Beanbag Diaries in February. So a couple of big things since February. Um, one, I've signed up for the New York City Marathon. Very excited about it. That is my big bucket list thing. And what can I say? Haven't started training yet. I'm gonna do about a 20 week training plan. So that's gonna start strictly on the 1st of July. And I do wanna make, make videos about that. Fun fact, I actually signed up for the New York Marathon in 2019. I actually won the lottery. And then I had a, a family situation happen. So I actually had to cancel. But it has been on my bucket list for so, so long. And I just feel like if I don't do it this year, I don't know when I'm gonna do it. And so uh, it was really hard to get in but I found a way to get in and me and my boyfriend will be running that together. So that's really cool as well. Um, just the chance to share it with someone is, it makes it even more special because I never knew anyone in my life who wanted to do it. And yes, admittedly, I have kind of <laughs> uh, peer pressured or influenced him into running, but I mean, he's obviously totally up for it. It's, you have to be up for doing a marathon. And yeah, that's, that's one of the things I wanted to share is, I'm doing the New York City Marathon and I'm so excited about it for so many reasons, not just like the, the because it's the thing that I've wanted to do for so long. I'm so excited about the journey, like the training process. I know it's going to be brutal because especially we're in, we're in, we're going to be approaching peak winter and Melbourne winter is horrible. I don't have a lot of viewers from Melbourne, but it is horrible. Um, obviously it gets dark really early, so I'm gonna have to get really creative and disciplined with time management, sticking to a schedule and things like that. But it's a challenge that I really need and I'm excited for it for so many reasons, for filming the content around it, for the actual training journey, for getting fit, for obviously running the race, getting a holiday at the end of it as well, and just taking this big thing off. Like, I just can't wait. Anyway, so that's happened since February, actually signing up for that, committing to it. Like, you can wanna do these things sometimes, but it's not until you commit. And even just signing up for a race, depending on how much you've paid for it, you can pull out. But this thing, we cannot pull out. Not to mention flights and everything like that really adds more, more to the cost. So yeah, um, overall, it's very expensive. So we're not pulling out, we're committed, and I'm so excited to start training. I'm currently in the process of looking for a really good training plan. There's a really cool app called Runner. Anyway, I'm not gonna talk about running for the rest of this video, I promise, because I know it's annoying when someone's a runner and they talk about running too much and you're not a runner. So anyway, I have been working in the startup now for four months. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna be talking too much about work work in this, in this video. I don't have that much to say. 
Um, there's obviously a lot of things I can't say as well. So weirdly, I'm not gonna talk about work too much, maybe a little bit, but yeah, it's, let's just say it's a roller coaster. It's a freaking roller coaster. <laughs> um, but again, it's absolutely what I need and needed, especially given the year I had with work last year. All of that's in my previous feedback diary. So anyway, and then there's something I did, uh, I've done um, as well in the last four months that I haven't been really sure that I wanted to share, but I'm just gonna quickly mention it um, because I, I have seen a few other people mention it in their videos and it's made me more comfortable with wanting to share it. And it's really helped to know that other, other people have done this as well, but I have gone through the process of egg freezing. It's a whole topic of its own. It's, it's a very personal decision, but for someone who's super career focused, but also wants a big family and to have an option like that, it was a no brainer for me. So if any of my female viewers out there really want to know anything about that process, I, I will consider making a video about it because I realized when I was going through the process, there just wasn't a lot of information. I'm not sure if I want to talk about it publicly, but at the same time, I think if it benefits anyone, then why not? I think that's all I really want to say about it in this video, but I have gone through that in the last four months. And yeah, that took out a good chunk, like took out, meaning it does, it does take it out of you. <laughs> it's a, it's quite an involved process. And yeah, that was a big chunk of, like that was like a month end to end probably. So that happened as well. That's probably what I wanna share about the last few months. Um, I'm really excited to share with you guys what I did today. And this will be coming out hopefully as my next video. But today I spent the entire day outside in like different places around Melbourne filming my next video. And I've been trying to push myself to not just film sitting down in a room, four walls, you know, same sort of setting because I've been loving this channel, Tapioca Press. I'll, I'll link it above. She's She makes awesome videos and they're just really wholesome. And she lives in Beijing, I think Beijing, somewhere in China. And yeah, she just films a lot of shots in her videos um, at various locations and I love it. It inspired me to get out. It, it got me over my fear of filming in public and my fear of, my fear of judgment from strangers. So I'm so excited for you all to see that video. The topic of that video is how YouTube changed my life and what YouTube has taught me. Um, I've seen a lot of people do this trend. I've tried to make mine a little bit different. I don't wanna just talk about the same old stuff. So mine is a slightly different take, but I'm very excited to share it. I think one of the reasons I wanted to film this video tonight, even though I spent the entire day filming, is because I felt so energized and I felt so fulfilled my cup was so full after spending my free time filming that video. And it's not necessarily just about that video. It's it's my creative outlet that I spent all of my Saturday on. And I think when you find something, and I talk about this in that video, because YouTube has taught me this, when you find something that you want to do with no real reward for it, right? Like, what is the reward? for publishing videos over and over and over again, just to see some numbers on a screen go up. It's, and, and to make a few dollars. Like honestly, it's not until you get your channel to a certain point where monetarily it's, it's, it's worth it. Because if you weigh up the time and the cost and like your hourly rate for what goes into making a video, like it doesn't make sense. But um, it might not be videos for you, it could be anything. But when you find that thing, that you are willing to do for free. It's incredible. As much as I've wanted to do YouTube for, since I was like 13, um, I never knew, I kind of never knew why. And it's so strange that it's taken me almost three to four years into this channel to really understand like why it fulfills me so much. So yeah, I, I don't know, you can probably tell I haven't fully processed this thought yet but it's something i'm very much going through right now and i'm so grateful to have found that the thing that i can do for hours on end yeah i don't know it, it puts a smile on my face and that's why i just felt so buzzed tonight to just keep filming so that's why i'm filming right now but yeah that was a really fun fun day just to go around different places in melbourne um and and film so 
that's pretty much what I spent the whole day doing. And then I came home, then I cleaned a little bit and here I am quite, quite literally. So I need to top up the Cocoa Pops, hold on. As I had to take a break because my microphone battery died, but we're back and I wanna talk about mid-year check-ins because I am notorious for goal setting, weekly, monthly check-ins with myself and monthly resets. If I do not do a check-in or a reset with myself at a regular cadence, I genuinely feel like I don't know <laughs> where my life is going. And I, I try, like I wonder sometimes why that is. If you're like that as well, let me know. But I, I do often wonder, why am I like that? Why can I, why do I have to track everything? Um, can I not just do something without tracking it? You know, like I often feel the need, like I feel the need to track everything. Um, and and it, eb Ooh, it, it ebbs and flows. So for example, I tracked my habits almost every single day for a couple of years and then I, I've stopped doing that. Um, every book that I read, I have to track like a rating for it my thoughts on it and stuff like that. Um, my goals, I have to obviously track. Um, I do have a whole Notion template and video on that, by the way, if you're interested. Um, it's, it's worked really well for me. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, then you might enjoy it. Um, yeah, I just, I feel the need to track everything. And I was reflecting on this uh, and I think it might just be because I like to have so many balls in the air all the time. I like to be doing lots of things all the time. And as someone who tries to be an overachiever in every aspect of my life, like overachiever in terms of competing with myself as well. It's not, not about overachieving or beating others. It's me against me. Um, I think because I have all of the stuff I'm trying to juggle, if I don't have a way to track something, then I just, I don't know where it's at. So yeah, let me know if you're like me. Uh, it would be really nice to know if other people are because no one in my own life is like me, um, no one. And I just don't know sometimes like what, like I wanna meet someone else who, who thinks about life like that. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the mid year check-in and I'm, I don't know, I feel like often the sentiment around hitting June and July is wow, so much of the year has gone, like how has that happened? And I'm just like, it, it amps me up, like it really gets me going and it gets me excited about, wow, there's only six months left and I have so much to do because I do feel like sometimes the start of the year is a time where you're kind of still figuring stuff out. And I think especially for us in the Southern Hemisphere, because it is our summer, we can kind of get a very easy start to the year. And then like in the thick of winter for us, for us which is the middle of the year, I feel like that's when I, I bunker down, like I literally hibernate because it's so cold and I just get stuff done and I feel, I definitely feel like I'm in that zone at the moment. So yeah, that's midly, uh, that's mid-year check-in stuff. But uh, as I mentioned already, my non-work goal with the marathon, that's a huge, a huge thing on my 2024 list, uh, goal list. And it actually it was on my 2023 list as well. Um, so yeah, that one's gonna be a long process, probably a good, probably a good six months end to end from like trying to book the race to actually committing to it, to all the preparation required to actually get into training. Um, I'm taking strength training very seriously for this marathon training period because I've never done that before with any long distance training I've done. I've always neglected strength because I just, I just didn't know how important it was. So I'm really excited to actually just spend more time in the gym. It be an intentional thing that's gonna help me with my running. I think that's, that's really exciting to me. And it's not that weightlifting is going to, not that I'm lifting any, I'm like, I'm doing dumbbells by the way, um, that it's not, it's not gonna impact your running and it's not, it only helps your running. So that's been a really cool thing to learn more about in recent, in recent months. I guess this segues nicely into being a multi-passionate and being a generalist. I did post a video a few weeks ago about this topic. Um, I really wanted that video to do super well because I really feel like I'm onto something. Like I feel like the future of work, this is the gist of that video, 
I feel like the future of work is people who do lots of things, like having a career portfolio. That's what my video is about. You can say being a generalist uh, as well, or you can say someone who's multi-passionate, multi-hyphenated. But the thing that I've been actively working on recently is how do I actually get really smart about doing lots of things? Because I think it's all well and good to try and do lots of different things, but there are so many things that are difficult with trying to do too many things at once. And you do have to have a system and you do also have to prioritize. So I watched a really good video the other day about an exercise that you can do uh, with yourself, which is just listing all of your interests and hobbies and passions and anything you like. They can all be completely unrelated to each other as well. And kind of going through this process of asking yourself different questions and then picking only like a few. And you can do this every once in a while. And it's kind of this process that acknowledges, yes, I like all these things. Yes, I could do something with all of these things. But right now I'm gonna pick the top three or the top five or whatever it is. And you're being really intentional about it. And you know, maybe in five months time, you can do that exercise again and decide that some of those top things have to change to something else. So that's an exercise I haven't yet done myself, probably because I I actually think I'm gonna find it quite confronting. Not doing something is a really hard thing for me. Like saying no to something, all I think about is the opportunity cost, um, but I need to flip that and actually think about if I try and do all the things, there is also an opportunity cost to that. So yeah, that's something I've been working on and has been a big theme of the last few months for me and i i have been working with my career coach on this as well and she's been keeping me accountable with how i manage my time um, i've been theming my days i've been doing time blocking uh, using google calendar and i have within through the process of actually theming my days and doing time blocking, I actually ended up kind of focusing on certain things over others. And it took me the process of going through time blocking, like practically going through it, to actually admit to myself that I was going to stop, for example, making TikTok videos. And so I haven't actually been making any TikTok for quite, quite a few months. And I decided to just invest so much more into YouTube. And I found that decision really hard to make previously. Like I just wanted to do it all. And therefore I was constantly feeling the stress of not doing enough. And I think this is one of the downsides of being someone who's multi-passionate is you constantly feel the guilt and the opportunity cost of not doing everything. But the guilt was weighing me down so much that it was like debilitating me. So yeah, I went, I went through some, some stuff on that with my career coach, decided to get really, really intentional with, I hate, I hate saying time management, but yeah, essentially my systems, my way of thinking about the time that I have and how I want to use it. And just, yeah, it was really cool to see that through that process, when I was like designing my ideal week in a Google calendar, for example, I wanted to put aside a lot of time to YouTube. I genuinely didn't feel like allocating time to TikTok and short form content. And yeah, that was that was really eye opening for me because I always felt like I just had to do the TikTok thing because that's kind of how I started with with all of this, like a lot of the side content stuff I'm doing now. So I'm going on a massive rant at the moment. Again, this is a reflection for me. I'm sorry if <laughs> this is not making sense to anyone else. Guys, I think I might end up finishing this entire cocoa box. Pop, Coco Pops box tonight, but whatever, whatever. I'm running 11 kilometers tomorrow, so it's okay. Speaking of YouTube and investing in it, um, it's it's been doing me wonders. Like I feel like my investment in my YouTube channel has been reaping rewards. Not 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 financially. I'm still only making a couple of hundred dollars a month from my YouTube channel and that's fine, it's great. But it's more in terms of the connections I'm making with other creators. It's the brand outreach that I'm getting. I'm not, I haven't signed up to any sponsored videos and I'm gonna be very selective about that when I do. 
but it's just to see that picking up. Um, I haven't been very excited by most of the brands that have reached out, by the way, but just to see it picking up because that is, it's just a really good sign that things are going in the right direction and eventually whenever it happens, like I'll find the right brand. Hopefully my goal is to find a long-term sponsor for my channel. So a brand that will sponsor, you know, whether it's one or two videos a month or something like that, that's my goal. Um, rather than just random sponsorships integrated throughout videos, even though that, that is still something I'd, you know, eventually be interested in. Um, but yeah, just to see brand outreach getting into my inbox is, it's just, it's nice to know that things are growing in that direction. Um, this is going to lead to me talking about solopreneurship in a second, by the way. Um, and then I wanted to share a really cool opportunity. I had actually two opportunities. One isn't actually going ahead because the, the company decided to pause, but I was going to go to Singapore to attend the Figma Asia Pacific conference. And that was because of my content and my YouTube channel. And I couldn't quite believe that I had that opportunity based on the size of my channel or the topic that I even talk about because I typically talk about product management, not necessarily product design and Figma is a design product, but that was really cool. Um, it was unfortunate that they ended up um, canning that whole campaign, but that's totally fine. Um, and then I'm doing, instead of that, weirdly it's on the same day, in Sydney, instead, I'm going to a workshop held by uh, another tech company. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, talking about their new AI product. So that's really cool. I still keep questioning how I'm getting that kind of brand outreach with the size of my channel, but I'm trying to flip that to why not? Like, of course I am. Why wouldn't I get that brand outreach? So yeah. Um, it's been, it's been great. I really wanted to share that progress that's happening with this channel because I want these rambles to be valuable for you in some way. I want to just be a bit vulnerable in this moment. While I talk about how my YouTube channel is growing well, let me tell you that sometimes I still don't know why, or I question why it's growing. And I question why people watch my videos and I question whether I'm providing enough value or of course I compare myself to other others and I question when a brand reaches out whether they intended to, did they make a mistake? Uh, especially with this, this Figma opportunity, I, I was like, surely this is a mistake. <laughs> so yeah, it's really weird. It's part of me is like all go full on investing in this channel because I know it can be and lead to some really amazing stuff for my career. But at the same time, there's this devil on my shoulder that's like, don't be silly. That's not gonna happen or that's not you. So yeah, I think it's something that a lot of people deal with and I just wanted to share that I do too. So yeah, um, but yeah, let's talk about solopreneurship because without going into too much detail, um, obviously my side projects really, really influence how I feel about being a solopreneur. And there's something about just the ease of working by yourself, um, not, not for yourself, by yourself. Because let me tell you, I've realized that so much of the challenges that we deal with in jobs whether you work for a big company or whether you work for a startup, like it doesn't matter, right? It's a job still, are people related. Like people are so difficult. And oh my gosh, I just go through days sometimes where I'm like, I don't wanna work with people. Do I even wanna work with a small team of four or five people? Sometimes I'm like, no, many days I just think, screw it, screw people. I do not want to work with another human being. Um, and then I love doing my own little projects, right? That's, that's what my side hustles are to me. And in case you didn't know, I am an only child. Um, 
I'm very comfortable with spending time alone. I love spending time alone. I'm I'm more introverted. I won't say I'm like an introvert, but I'm more on the introverted side. And yeah, just, I don't know. It's There's something about those two things, the way that I am and what I enjoy. And then just having this revelation recently that, wow, I think every single problem in a work environment that I've ever had or issue or challenge or whatever has always been because of a person. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and I'm not saying there's like situations that have happened. I just mean people have egos, people have different personalities, people have different ways of working, different communication styles, uh, different motivations. And yeah, like it's all people based. And I know it sounds silly to say, I just realized this, but yeah, it's something clicked where I was like, wow, if I, if we could get rid of working with humans, then you wouldn't have as many problems necessarily. Like I'm sure it, there would be different types of problems. So it's easy to say. And yes, there's, there's all the downsides of working by yourself, but all of this to say, I, 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 I really think that I want to be a solopreneur. I want to be a solopreneur and it's really hard to say that when I'm I've never wanted that before I think I've always re realized and recognized that I love just doing things by myself but I, I never thought because it, I guess I've never really understood how it could be a career but right in 2024 you can absolutely be a solopreneur um, and if anything the world is kind of going more in that direction so yeah, I, I almost feel like this could be a goal that I actually end up setting for myself. Like, I don't think it's going to be in this year. Th this year is going to be, the rest of this year is going to be about exploring more of the idea around solopreneurship and looking at how I can take some of the stuff I'm currently doing or even add some new things to it because I really need more things on the plate um yeah just let's explore how I could become a solopreneur and when I say become a solopreneur I mean like it has to be financially sustainable and commercially viable but I think it's something I'm gonna really seriously start can like pursuing with a goal of maybe in 2025 I like set set a, like a again like a goal for myself because I need that to work towards actually fully becoming a solopreneur. So I'll keep you up to date with it. It's a big change from a lot of the stuff I talk about, like a lot of um, my work experience to date and building tech products. And But you know what, with AI, who says you need a team? Who says you need a team? Like the AI is your team, potentially. You've got, yeah, I've never thought about that yet. You can be a solopreneur, but if you want to do something that requires skills that other people have, well, guess what? Maybe AI uh, is now those people. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of scary as well, but it's kind of cool at the same time. So yeah, again, fresh thoughts, things that I'm currently navigating and yeah, but I'm, I'm really excited with the idea of solopreneurship. Yeah. Um, but you know, that, that doesn't, that doesn't discount or take away the fact that I love entrepreneurship in the form of just startups and solving problems with technology and the hustle of like a small team, bringing something to life and all of that. I love that so much. So yeah, but, um, let's see where this goes, but that's something I really wanted to share today. Career coaching, I might touch on that now. So talking about solopreneurships and the challenges of working with people, uh, one of the things that I want to tackle next with my career coach is something that I've, I've learned about myself in the startup uh, role that I'm in now, which is I'm too empathetic. And I all, and look, seeing things from other people's perspectives is great. And I think 
it's really obvious when someone can't do that and I think it's that's not a good thing or it doesn't help when you work in a team or it makes that person really difficult to work with but I actually have realized in recent weeks that I'm too empathetic to the point where it's it's not good for me like it, it's a disadvantage for me or it's it's a weakness of mine that I want to work on and I guess how I want to work on it is I can still be empathetic but I want to be decisive I want to be assertive I want to be clear about my opinion and I don't just want to constantly be in a middle ground because I really do see things from different people's perspectives quite well and I think I'm pretty good at putting myself to some extent not fully in someone else's shoes so yeah that's yeah it's and I've also been talking to uh, a couple of people in my team about this or people that I work with who have said to me look I think you're really empathetic and then I've, I've said yeah but I think too much and they're like yeah I can see why that how that might be and it would have been great if in this situation you actually were more direct or you just made the decision because you are you are the boss in this given area or whatever it is like we're not we're not hierarchical but you know what i mean like if you are the head of product for a team and a business you do have the right to make a decision about something but i think i am i lean towards making sure everyone is satisfied in some way and i have to just realize that it's okay for me to make a decision as long as like it's okay for me to make a decision that not everyone might be happy with as long as people have been given the opportunity to be heard that they feel comfortable sharing their opinion and voicing their feedback ultimately you just have to do what you have to do so that's something i'm actively working on and uh, something i really want to discuss with my career coach what i really love about my career coach and by the way i'm also thinking about getting her on my channel for an interview i haven't asked her yet but it's on my list to ask her I think that would be really, really, really cool. So if you have certain questions you would like to ask a career coach, how do I describe a career coach? It's honestly a mix between, no, it's not a mix. It's, it's a career coach is someone who is not, this is how she described it to me, not a mentor, not an advisor, not a therapist. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what you want to do with that, but that's how she described to me like there was a, quadru a quadrant and career coach was one of the quadrants and these other three worlds were their own quadrant. I can't remember what was on the axes, but um, she will hopefully explain that in the interview that I do with her on this channel. But yeah, um, it's something that I want to work with her on in terms of my being too empathetic because she's really great at coming up with little exercises to help me think about things in a different way. And I'm super reflective, like on my own. And I think I have a really, I have my own way of thinking through things in a very intentional and thoughtful way. But I think some of the questions she asks and the way she gets me to think about something is, is something I can't necessarily always do for myself. And yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. So I'm going to be going through that process with her and I'll maybe in my next video, I'll share um, my next beanbag diaries. I'll share how I'm going with that. So guys, I've definitely eaten way too many cocoa puffs at this point, but I think I need to finish the ones that are already in my bowl. Now let's do a book haul because as I mentioned, I am trying to become a physical book reader. A few reasons for this. One, just to spend less time on screens. That's a big one. Secondly, I, for safety reasons, I've just stopped using my headphones as much as I used to when I'm outside. I don't know, I just, I just wanna be more alert because there's a lot of weird, bad stuff that's happened in Australia this year. A lot of, yeah, things I don't, I don't wanna like mention on here, but just scary things in public places that you hear about and it's just put me on edge like it's things that happen to groups of people or women or to people with dogs or people just trying to steal stuff and 
it just, it really got me on edge. And I decided that I just wanna be a bit more alert when I'm out and about. And that's a really big reason as well, because I would without fail listen to a book um, when I was going on walks, which I do at least once a day, if not twice a day. And yeah, now my reading time is drastically cut down because that was a really good way to multitask and read. But I think there are so many more benefits to me reading physical books as well. So yeah, I just, I, the, the physical books I wanna buy are the ones that I think are going to be more classic. They're gonna be the ones that I can keep, the ones that I can read over, ones that I can probably let a friend borrow because I recommend it to them because it's got something that might help them. Ones that I can also write in. I'm a, I know either you're in the camp of do not write in a book and keep it pristine or scribble all over it. I want to scribble all over it. I want to treat my books like a notebook. I don't want them to just be like a library book, you know? Anyway, all of these books I got through recommendations, which I think is the best way. I'm still waiting on one more, but yeah, um, this one I've had for a while, but let's start with this, Diary of a CEO. I, I am very fond of the Diary of a CEO podcast. I think uh, in recently, I've, I'm just really overwhelmed with the number of episodes that are available there, and they're all so long. So I just, I'm like, okay, I just can't, can't dedicate all my free time to just listening to these really educational and informative podcasts. But yeah, I did buy Stephen's book. Um, my honest thoughts on it, really great book. I really like how it's written. I like the format of it as well. Like you can pick it up and read any chapter and there's little diagrams and it explains complex concepts really well. But I guess it's, <clears throat> I didn't like, it's a bit, some parts, some chapters, I guess are just more boring than others because I haven't finished it yet. I'm almost, I'm like three quarters of the way through, but I got it a while ago. Uh, so this is not a fresh new book haul, but yeah, it's something that I expected to read cover to cover pretty quickly, but I, I don't find myself super excited to like reach for it. But nonetheless, it's got some good, like, yeah, it's fine. I'd give it like a six, six out of 10 maybe. <laughs> um, anyway, next I got The Untethered, Untethered Soul. Uh, this book is probably the least, like the most, most different to the other three. Um, I guess this is more of like a spiritual book, not self-help, but yeah, spiritual, trying to understand your inner self. Um, I've only started reading it. I'm on like chapter three or four, so I can't say much, but I can say that apparently this book is life-changing. Two of, two people I know have read it and they said it was life-changing for them and that they would read it over and over again. So yeah. It, I guess it helps you question. So far my take on this is it how it has made me question the way I think about things in life. Um, and the next two, I haven't really touched at all, but I'm so excited for them. One you would have seen is 101, 101 essays that will change the way you think. Um, and again, I believe you can just open this up on any page. So it's not necessarily one you need to read end to end, but you can kind of just pick it up when you want to get a, yeah, a, a piece of inspiration or motivation or something like that. And the last book is The Creative Act, A Way of Being. I'm very excited for this one. And weirdly, I actually don't know too much about like what this book is actually about, but I've, heard some paragraphs from it and they resonated with me so much so i think if you're um a business owner uh a, in a creative trade an entrepreneur a maybe you're an artist like something creative it could even be someone who's doing various side hustles and stuff like that i think this book is good for you would be good for you let me just pick a random page Creativity supporting habits can begin the moment you arise each day. These might include looking at sunlight before screen light, meditating, exercising, showering in cold water before beginning creative time in a suitable space. These habits look different for everyone and perhaps different for the same artist from day to day. 
You might sit in the forest and pay attention to your thoughts and make notes. You might drive in a car for an hour with no destination in mind, listening to classical music and seeing if anything sparks. It's helpful to set scheduled office hours or uninterrupted periods of joyful play that allow your imagination to soar. For one person, that window of time might be three hours, for another, it might be 30 minutes. Some prefer to work from dusk till dawn, while others create in 20 minute sessions with five minute breaks between each. So yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know how to explain what it's about, but I think it's helpful for people who are maybe living quite unstructured work days or um, don't really have a system for their work because it's quite creative, um, have decisions to make around their business. And it's a helpful way to think about that. Yeah, so I'm excited for, for this too. That's my book haul. And I think that's it for this beanbag diaries, couch diaries. Um, that's a lot of what has been on my mind recently. And I guess in summary, I'm in a period of time where I'm really thinking about what my career is to me now, like how my career is going to evolve because what I valued in my career in my early 20s, in my late 20s, like even like until a few years ago, what I, what I valued in my career and what I thought I wanted my career to be is, is honestly changing quite quickly and it's not something I ever expected. Um, as someone who is and has always been very career driven and career motivated, I always thought a career for me was going to be about big working in a big team and working in a, in a thriving business and um, not climbing a ladder by any means. I've never wanted to do that, but you know, being in a certain role, uh, even if it is in a small team and like progressing. But yeah, I've kind of unexpectedly, I think, with a lot of the creator economy stuff that is at the forefront of the world today, I think with a lot of that, I've started to realize, holy crap, I think I can actually make something of this. It really leans well into my personality, into how I like to work, into my creativity. And oh my gosh, I realized people are so freaking difficult and possibly I haven't really realized how difficult it is to work with different types of people because of the roles I've been in before. And I guess now being in a, a head of product role is, is where I'm realizing, wow, maybe previous leaders that I had shielded me from all of this. So that's also really cool. Like it's, it's a great leadership quality, I think, when you shield your team from stuff. And, and maybe all this stuff with people being difficult and different and you having to manage personalities and egos and desires individual people have, like it's, it was always there. I just never saw it before because I wasn't the one dealing with it directly. So yeah, it's all so interesting. That's kind of the stuff I'm thinking about at the moment. And I'm really very, very excited to see how my career evolves, but I'm really excited to see how just careers in general evolve. And, you know, a lot of what my video and career portfolios was is kind of about that. And without you having to watch that video, the gist of it, as I mentioned, is that you should build a career portfolio for yourself so that not all of your eggs are in one basket because the world is absolutely going that way. And I think a lot of what we're seeing in 2024 with layoffs and macroeconomic situation, people who have all of their eggs with their employer, which majority of the world probably does, are going to are struggling, um, really, really struggling. And I think just seeing all of that play out combined with my current role and navigating this new leadership role that I have and combined with, uh, my side projects going well and me absolutely falling so deeply in love with my YouTube process is all just like accumulating to me having this moment 
soon, I think, where I'm like, wow, I, I think there's a career path for me here that I didn't really think about before. So yeah, that's, yeah, I don't even know. That's, that's, that's it. That's what, that's what's happening at the moment. Um, thanks for watching if you got this far. Wow, if you got this far, comment Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> like yeah comment coco puffs and thanks for watching like if you listen to me ramble for so long thank you for watching this was so fun for me this was so therapeutic for me i'm a super reflective person and this is a formal reflection for me like it just feels so good to just get it out it just even articulating a lot of this stuff which I haven't actually like verbally, verbally articulated a lot of this. A lot of it is thoughts in my head. So even the process of just voicing it is really helpful and it helps me connect the dots and think of different ways to evolve my thinking on things. And yeah, um, it's what I enjoy and it's what I enjoy watching others make videos about as well. So yeah, last but not least, actually, before I end this video on the topic of what I like to talk about, like, should I start a podcast? And this is not necessarily a question I need anyone else to answer. I want to start a podcast. My biggest barrier with it is I can't decide what the podcast should be about. And I'm very much overthinking format um, and topic. So for example, should it be just this kind of stuff? Me just talking about things like this. I don't know. I'll have to think of a few topics that this revolves around, but there's like navigating this sort of stuff in life and majority solo episodes. Maybe once in a while I can have someone else on, but I don't really want the pressure of that. And again, in doing the podcast, I think if a lot of it is going to be for what is going to work for me and what I'm going to enjoy, it's going to be this. Um, but then it's like, well, maybe because I see an opportunity for this. Maybe I have a podcast that is product management and tech career, tech product specific, kind of like a Lenny's newsletter, but replicating that for Southern Hemisphere, replicating that for companies and leaders in Australia, New Zealand, Asia Pacific. Like I think Lenny interviews and talks to a lot of leaders in North America, but I feel like we could really do with something like that on this side of the world. But yeah, and you know, maybe I don't have to choose. Maybe I, like I just pick one for now. The one that's the lowest barrier, which is definitely the first, like chats like this and see where that goes. Because the other one, the Lenny's one, definitely is requires, requires more work. And yeah, um, I really want to start a podcast. It's one of those things like my YouTube channel, something like it's an, it's an urge that I have inside me that I feel like I need to explore. And I give this advice in a lot of my videos where I say, if there's something that piques your interest or you're curious about or keeps coming up for you, you need to lean into that because it's coming up for you for a reason. And so I need to tell myself that advice. And yeah, I guess if you got this far, because if you did, you probably would listen to a podcast like this. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think the topics, the general themes should be? Do you think it needs a theme? Um, and if it's talking about all the stuff that I talked about today, what kind of theme would you call that? Um, or category of podcast? Like, it, I don't think it's self-help, but I also don't think it's like education. It's not entertainment. Like, what is it? Um, but yeah, that's it for this, this chit chat. Thanks again for watching. Um, I should maybe just do like a live stream next time of something like this. So maybe I will do that when I'm chilling on a Friday or Saturday night some other time. But yeah, for now, I'm going to wrap it up here. And thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you in my next video, hopefully coming out very, very soon.